Hello, 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 and thank you for tuning in to the Keto Answers Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Anthony Gustin, and joining me this week is Andy Nilo. This is going to be a little bit of a different episode than normal. Uh, Andy owns a skincare brand called Alatura, and I've been asking him to get on the show for a very long time, and I've actually been begging him to write a lot of articles for our site just because one of the things that people don't understand about health is all of the weird things that we put on our skin get absorbed immediately into our bloodstream and cause a lot of problems. So when people are asking, you know, I'm, I'm having these weight loss plateaus, like I, I'm feeling still high inflammation, things like that, but then are putting literally hundreds of weird chemicals in their body that go into their, into their bloodstream and get soaked up and just completely trash your brain chemistry, your adrenals, your hormones, all this stuff. It, you know, your body has to work together. And so this is one of the most important things that I think people are overlooking. So not necessarily about nutrition this one, but probably is going to surprise you regarding all the stuff that you put on your face, your skin, everything. I mean, this goes for men and women. Um, Andy's story is also pretty incredible. The guy is full of passion and his start and how he got into this is super, super interesting. So tune in and I hope you enjoy. Before we get to the episode, I wanted to chat about our sponsor, Perfect Keto. Perfect Keto is all about making a ketogenic diet healthy and accessible. Whether you're reading all of our online guides or articles or enjoying Perfect Keto's exogenous ketones or any other keto-friendly products, everything you need to make keto work for you is at perfectketo.com. I know what you're thinking. Hey, aren't you the founder of Perfect Keto? Yep, that's right. And all of my insanely high standards have been put into making each and every product. My background as a functional medicine clinician helps me craft the cleanest and healthiest possible products and the best information about the ketogenic diet. Head on over to perfectketo.com to learn anything you need to know about the ketogenic diet. And if you've never tried any of our products before, feel free to use the code Keto Podcast for 20% off your first order. With that being said, let's get into the show. Andy, thank you for coming on the show, my man. Hey, Anthony. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you have a very unique background. You are you're quite the man. You're, you're quite the man. So before we dig in a little bit, why don't you just tell folks kind of what you're doing right now, and then we'll jump backwards a few years. Sure. So... I, uh, I own a, an all natural skincare line called Alatura Naturals. So that's, it's Latin for feeding and nourishing. And I just strongly believe that your skin being your largest organ, you want to treat it like another mouth. And I just, uh, right now, you know, I'm based out of Los Angeles, California. We've uh, expanded, we'll turn five in June, June 26th to Congrats. be specific, but thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun for, for me just because, you know, bouncing back from, uh, an accident and then wanting to just, you know, accelerate the healing of my injuries. And, you know, we can touch on that, but I just, I just became obsessed with labels because the stuff that I was finding on shelves, I, the first thing I do, you look at it and then turn, I've been doing that for years, ever since I was about 18 or 19, when I was focusing in on calories, fat, protein, because I wanted to gain weight as an athlete, I would always have to look at the label and just see, all right, you know, between those three, uh, you know, ingredients on the ingredient deck. I wanted them all to be high because I wanted to put on weight and put on muscle and, and you know, show up to UC Berkeley as in the best shape possible. So I've, I've been reading labels for years, but I never thought that that would translate into a skincare, uh, you know, obsession, so to speak, because I just never had been that, that interested in it. But well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that people are starting to get a little more savvy right now about reading certain labels on food. Uh, I, think, I think we still have a, a ways to go to make sure people understand certain ingredients like vegetable right. oils that can be hidden sugars that can be hitting um process like little processing ingredients but ultimately i mean the kind of the standard thing to tell people is if you don't know like if you don't can't pronounce it or don't know what it is then you probably shouldn't put it in your body but what people don't realize is that that same rule should probably apply to things you put on your body as well right oh absolutely and i mean the things that really scare me are the the things that you do daily i mean aside from you know, the shower filter, say if you don't even use one of those, that that's like one of the ultimate hacks I would say right there is just getting a good, good shower filter. And then the shampoo that you're massaging that. Uh, okay. Let's, let's pause. Let's pause there. I don't have a shower filter. What's going on? Oh, you don't? Am I, am I yeah, losing well, out here? What, what the hell? Hey, man? man, I can't believe nobody's. Oh, yeah, definitely get one of those. And I'll, I'll send you a link to that. I use an aqua sauna brand and you, you just uh, change it out every three months. It's like $30, so, you know, $10 a month, no big deal at all. And you're fil filtering out a lot of the chlorine, heavy metals, and uh, just toxins that are, you know, commonly located in tap water. And, you know, you're, you're just absorbing that and showering, rubbing it into your skin daily. And then, then on top of that, let's say you have a, I don't want to throw, 
company out of, let's say Dove Body Wash or say, uh, you know, Pert Plus shampoo. I mean, you're just rubbing in the number one most carcinogenic ingredient, sodium lauryl sulfate, that close to your brain daily, right? I mean, then people wonder why their hair's brittle, falling out, going bald, breaking. I mean, I really feel like that's a big culprit because the top, one of the top two, um, in, you know, most carcinogenic ingredients in say anything, fragrance, and then sodium lauryl sulfate, and then I'm sure they have other foaming agents in there as well, okay. as fillers and alcohol. Okay, so, so Andy, you're yeah. clearly passionate about this stuff, and I think that we're getting <laughs> into a really meaty part of it. But what I want you to do, your story is so amazing. I want to go back a little bit and make sure we highlight that before we, before people n- sure. understand like all these crazy things. It's like that. Th- these are all the questions that I want to dig into specifically. I yeah. think that's really important. But I think that your story is so powerful as well. So. Yeah, man. No, just, right. just maybe back it up to to your days, like you said, UC sure. Berkeley athlete, um, sports background, and then kind of fast forward from there. Sure. Yeah. So I went to I uh, was a, a top uh, hundred recruit coming out of high school and had scholarship offers to several different Division one schools and ended for, up uh, for for baseball, correct? For baseball, yes. Yeah, for baseball. And yeah, went to Cal. Finished up at St. Mary's College, which is uh, in the West Coast Conference. Played Pepperdine, uh, LMU, Santa Clara. And, uh, yeah, but I, uh, I wasn't, I had a draft party, uh, wasn't drafted and that kind of broke my heart. It closed the door right there because that's what I identified as, as an athlete. And then, you know, you go home living with your parents for a couple of weeks. And I had a couple teams, uh, work me out the diamondbacks, giants and, uh, brewers and white Sox, And they all just kind of, I mean, I was what, I was approaching 23 at the time. So there's a, there as a prospect, you know, they want, they want to project you by the time you're 25. And I was, you know, pretty close to being there just right out of college. And so they, uh, they declined. And, uh, so I was going to go the independent route, meaning still professional, but not affiliated with major league teams. That's where a lot of players go to, you know, do, you know, get a chance to expose themselves or, well, you know, show their talents to affiliated teams and hopefully get picked up after the draft. And so that's what the plan was. I moved down to Los Angeles, was crash, crashing on a friend's couch. And I, uh, was running lines with him. He was an actor but it was a baseball film and uh, I was nailing his lines. I mean, I was fresh out of baseball. So I was just kind of critiquing him on how ball players talk. And he was like, man, have you ever thought about doing this? Cause we were just doing this for about a week, preparing, preparing him for his audition. And people never do this. Actors never do this, especially down here. But he, he, he really felt strongly about getting me an audition for that role that he was auditioning for, which is super cool of him. And uh, it never happens. I didn't have an, an agent or a manager, you know, no real or anything like that. But I went in there, got a callback, got another callback, screen tested, and ended up booking that role as a lead in a feature film. So that I gave up baseball, but I've, I got the itch again to play, start playing, which is really weird. But uh, we filmed for a little over a month. I got representation and then just gave up baseball and started uh, riding it out as an actor model for about uh, well, I still technically do it, but I mean, I never, I never, I tell my agents, like, unless it's very specific baseball related and they know about the stuff that I've done, like a direct booking, I just don't want to audition. I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at right yeah. now, but I, uh, but yeah, then I was in a uh, March 20, 2011, that all got put on pause for a bit because I was crossing the street, just checking my phone, terrible habit of thinking cars will adjust to me. Uh, but yeah, I got, I got hit by a westbound heading, uh, Land Rover. I lost consciousness. I got hit into the eastbound lane um, and run over by a Toyota Tundra. By that by that time, I was you know I wasn't conscious, so I don't I don't remember the sec- <clears throat> the second part. But so you, I, you got uh, hit by one car and then another one, two. Yeah, yeah. Double whammy. You double whammy, and I got yeah they cut my jeans off me in the middle of Melrose, and I uh, woke up at Cedar Sinai ICU looking at my chin. It was a compound fracture. It was one of the worst compound fractures a maxillofacial surgeon. Uh, the resident maxillofacial surgeon at Cedar Sinai had ever seen. Matter of fact, he had to, he couldn't do it. So we had to hire, we had to wait a little bit and search for a, a private specialist to put my, uh, my jaw back together. I also had seven broken ribs and a collapsed lung and I was unrecognizable. I mean, that's uh, an extreme low point of, of uh, my life, but what it did, I mean, you know, five days later I was able to walk out. Luckily I didn't have any knee damage or ankle or elbow. So I, everybody thought I was crazy, but I was doing my best to do a, a push up and I was able to walk out, you know, one of my nurses was an ex Marine. He's like, Hey man, just, just so you know, any day you could walk out of a hospital, that's a, that's a pretty good day. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right, man. So that set the tone and on my recovery and perspective and just how to bounce back. I was, my jaw was wired shut. All my teeth were nubs in the front. So I didn't really want to, you know, go outside, but I'm not lazy at all. So I just, I just wanted to figure out a way to 
you know, accelerate the healing and beat this thing, get back on my feet and, you know, show my parents and family just, you know, they're, they're, they're just you see, you see the same person because I'm telling you, it was really bad. It was, I mean, it's hard to, very hard to look in the mirror and nothing else will either light that fire or put you down uh, by being just extremely disappointed by what, what, uh, what you see. So, I mean, I, I just uh, went to work. There's a ton of information out there available to all of us. And I just, it became my own little creative outlet. I became my own little science experiment, so to speak. And I would order ingredients and then start isolating them and, and combining them and seeing what worked and, and seeing what didn't work based on the results of, you know, hopefully seeing some type of, uh, you know, the swelling going down, but also the healing, uh, the accelerated healing of the abrasions and, and scarring that I had. I didn't expect the, the huge gashes to go, you know, go away overnight. Definitely did not, but the abrasions were gone within a week. And that's through just a combination of, of clays, superfoods, colostrum, pearl powder. I mean, all these different things that I would, was just, uh, was just researching purely. You, you, you just look like ingredient by ingredient, like what's best for skin healing, essentially well, collagen production. Like what, what was the thought right. process by, like, behind which ingredients you chose? Right. Well, circulation. I mean, that's where the clay came from. I really felt that that was good. I would study spot treatments. And so then I like, that's where I got the organic kelp powder in a couple clays, the Rasul and the bentonite, but then a couple of the other, well, and then the, the, scorbic, uh, the scorbic acid, as well, but the other ones were just kind of my old, my old little twists that I were that I was taking internally: the colostrum, ginseng, pearl powder, um, the eye light. These were all things that I was using as a detox. Well, the, the eye light for a detox protocol because I went through CT scans and obviously monthly X rays and antibiotics. I was in such a fog, so I wanted to just you know remove all those impurities. But also topically, it's like you said it, that it's so important to, to to make sure that you're feeding you know. The outside of our body, you know, as well as, as the inside. My, my job wired shut. I felt that I, I was going to rebound best through like just getting a, a nice little nutrient dense smoothie and then also just feeding my skin cells and creating a lot of blood flow to the, sur uh, the surface of my skin while subtly exfoliating that. And then after that was rinsed off, I feed it again to that freshly exfoliated area to hopefully regenerate the best and healthiest skin cell. And so that's yeah, basically the clays was would create the blood flow and then subtle mineral you know it's a it's a very mineralizing as well as bentonite eyelight are things that sh i mean a lot of people take uh, internally as well so that was not only feeding myself uh from the inside with that but also hitting that as as part of my clay mass that i was so, so that's what using. clay does is increase circulation I didn't, I didn't know that oh yeah well when it it it's very mineralizing but when it dries it, I mean, it just, the blood vessels complete, it, 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 it all, it like creates this constriction of those stagnant capillaries and gets them moving. That's why it's really important. I believe just to get, you know, for under eye circles and puffiness and uh, just to re reduce a lot of that congestion around the T zone and eye area. I mean, it is, it's a, uh, yeah, it's very effective in, in just bringing those capillaries and then start in, get those stagnant capillaries, just getting them circulated. And yeah, it's, it's one of those things that once you, once you dry, once it dries, you put it on. Obviously, it's like a, a paste, and then it, when it completely dries, you, I mean, your face is pulsating with circulation, and uh, I mean, so, so much to the point that I mean, it's almost like clockwork. We, uh, we, we get a lot of, well, not a lot, but sometimes we get customers that are alarmed with all the, you know, the redness and the blood flow. I mean, that's, and then you know, thirty minutes later when it subsides, they're they're like, oh man, I've never, never felt my, my skin feel so smooth. But yeah, I mean, the whole point was just to, just to. Just to subtly exfoliate three to four times a week through that mask and then feed it with just uh, an extremely hydrating, conditioning, nutrient-dense meal that I made just out of a cast iron pan, which is actually now our, our night cream. But I mean, that's just, yeah, that's how it happened. That was my protocol and I stayed consistent with it and I, because I saw results and I would add to it and it made me feel good. I mean, it was, uh, it's, uh, it was undeniably effective and I, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's, that was my little protocol. And I, I just, it, it led to like being able to go outside and feel better about how I felt about myself. And, yeah, and so, also on top of that, yeah. It's go just, ahead. It, no, I mean, on top of that, it's just, I mean, I, it was meant to, to help accelerate injuries. And then it turned into, wow, man, I really, it was almost embarrassing, like, because your skin looked like glass. And I'm serious. Like, I, I, like you go to certain, places and it looks like well at that time i mean this is quite a while ago but uh i mean it looked like you you know photoshopped it's i'm serious dude wow. it's uh, yeah yeah it's it's effective it just it, it just it, it just works extremely well it does exactly what it says it does but it's it's but the most important thing there is i knew one by one by one everything that went into it there are no holes in that and and, and i'm not like 
trying to pump the products. But I mean, it's because I, I couldn't find anything that were that was on the shelves that that didn't have a type of hole, whether it's glycerin, alcohol, or you know any type of fillers or right. harsh preservatives or fragrances. So that, that, you, you so. then after your accident, did you look for products first and then couldn't find any? Then you started doing the research and then just made your I, own and got your own ingredients and mixed it all together, or, or how did it? Well, I, I did, I, and I would go, that's, that's what, partly why I'm pretty fired up to be in air one right now is I didn't have a lot of money. And so what that's, that's part of why I went through with making my own in the first place. A lot of my doctors and surgeons were recommending these, these super expensive scar reducing or removal creams and, uh, you know, a little pace. And I, I just, I, you know, I turn it right around and it was, you know, a, a, you know, a little speck of an active ingredient that may do, may or may not work and then just full of everything that i'm against as far as parabens steroids and fillers and glycerin so were i just like, went were, you, were you against that stuff before or was it sort of a thing where you're like oh shit this is not good for skin if i wanted to, had to heal i was but not quite as i mean yeah year by year i, I became more you know into the holistic organic side of things and that that was more on the diet side of things but also um, I would use simple products, not simple products, but clean products. And I, I remember my, my go-tos, who were they? Aubrey Organics, which I think they got bought out by Clorox. So now they're Aubrey Naturals. And I was using Alba Organics. And I, I don't know, they're now Al uh, Alba Naturals. I mean, so, so ingredient decks were changing. And I'm like, oh, man, like they used to use coconut cream in this. And why are they using soybean oil now? And I'm like, ah. Oh, so like these are little things that I would pay attention to. And I'd see the change. Because you'd see it in the, you feel it in the products as well as a, like a different, uh, uh, it was a scrub that I was using. I forget the name, but I mean, just over time, you see ingredient decks change. And so I started, and that was right before the accident happened. And so I was a little hesitant and disappointed with, in, with that change. And, and I didn't even know I wasn't in business. So I didn't know the why things were happening, but it, it did make sense to me at the time. Like, obviously, uh, coconut cream is a lot more expensive than, say, you know, other, other most fine agents that can be combined to put that together and everybody, it's a business. So people are trying to make money. I get it, but I uh, would rather make things myself. And so that's why I kind of went to the drawing board and I've always used, and I kept it simple. I've always used bee products. So I would, I bought a, like a, a half pound of beeswax and then cacao butter because I was already made, you know, using cacao butter in my coffee, but I had also done research as far as how, how, can, how good it was for, um, counteracting uh, stretch marks. You know, a lot of women use, you know, Palmer's cacao butter, but that just smells incredible. And who, I mean, who knows how much cacao butter is actually in that, but I would just buy the raw form. And so I would just, I was like, all right, well, if it's that effective for stretch marks, I would start putting it on my scarring area right after I was, uh, after I applied the mask and little things like that, doing research and going a step further, what, rather than using regular honey, a friend of mine had put down a, a jar of Manuka honey on my bedside table in the hospital. And he's like, man, com combine this after, um, you, you, you just put that on your scarring area and then just, just every single day. And, uh, it'll, it'll heal uh, quickly. And that was, you know, bless his heart because that's actually a, a huge ingredient of ours right now in, in that night cream. But I was, I would combine that with things like the beeswax and, uh, sea buckthorn oil, the different essential oils that I felt, you know, were most beneficial to the skin. And that's where the the research came in on why, you you know, Tamanu, Argan, Sea Buckthorn, Clary Sage, all these things I would just isolate and buy because those weren't through the roof expensive. And then also they, I would, you know, a lot of those ended up being uh, home run ingredients that I still use to this day. But the trial and error part was really fun for me because you, you find out right off the bat certain things that just kind of dissolve. And that's where I, I found out, you know, the heavily marketed Tamanu, Argan oils, coconut oil. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see what other ones, uh, just, just did not, I, I just, they were just, they were very thin. They weren't very nourishing. I mean, whereas the lemongrass, sweet orange, carrot seed, calendula, primrose, sea buckthorn, especially were, uh, were, you know, they would stick around. They were thicker. They were, they had color to them. Most of them did. And I just felt like that, the color just signified a, a higher, uh, not only, well, I mean, not only the viscosity standpoint, but just had a higher antioxidant profile to me and just really right. nourished my skin. So, and, and so after yeah. you had some of these nailed down, was it like, okay, now I need to bring this to the world or how did you transform it into the brand you have now? Oh man, it, that was about a year and a half to maybe two years. And I was fine. Never. I mean, I, I just, 
a friend of mine who was saw me in the ICU. I picked her up from the airport a couple weeks later, and she was took a legitimate double take and was blown away by just how I looked. I mean, if I didn't talk, um, because you know my jaw was wired shut, and my teeth were gone, so like you'd obviously tell once I start talking. But she, my skin was great. Obviously, the scar's not going to go down, and there was significant swelling still, but the abrasions were completely gone. And she's like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "It was very hesitant to admit." how passionate I was about skincare at the time, but I'm so glad I, I started to go forward. And I was like, well, I'm kind of like, I don't know. I'm kind of like making this mask right now. And she's like this mask. I want to try it. And so I went over there. Uh, she loved it. And so she started, she invited her friends over. It became like their little thing, like their little, you know, wine night, Friday night, they'd invite their, their dancer friends over. And then word began to spread. And the next thing you know, I'm driving all around Los Angeles with a little backpack, a little bamboo bowl and, a uh, bottle of apple cider vinegar and a little handshaking container of the mask, like some, la- some lavender oil just to you know make it smell better because it was definitely earthy. We had twice the kelp powder content in there at that time. And all I wanted was a picture and maybe some type of feedback. I mean, I never planned on going forward with this because who would ever – I mean, how? what do you do? But I did – so what I did is – that I did that for about a year. Never would charge anybody I mean, because I wouldn't even know what to charge. And then, um, yeah, I, I would just post pictures – on on Facebook and just go, yeah, this is my thing. Just showing people, you know, in my little lab, I moved everything out of my bedroom into my living room, made my bedroom, my lab. And I was just like, take little selfies. Like, Hey, here I am. But you know, doing my little thing, it was a creative outlet. And it was just, it was my, it was like, a, it was fun for me. And so people would ask and I would just, I'd have them, you know, just try it out and then maybe take a picture and just give me feedback on on, you know, that's where the tinkering away of the kelp powder and maybe, you know, toning down the ascorbic acid, which is extremely frightening and stimulating. So, but then just about a year and a half of that, finally, someone, a friend of mine on Facebook, uh, she's like, honey, I got, what's this mask? I want it. She owns a med spa in San Diego called Alvarado Skin Institute. And her name is Mary Halls, bless her heart, because she, she had me come down to her, uh, to her med spa and I try, I tried it out for her, a couple of her friends and then some trusted, um, patients and clients of hers, they all loved it. All loved it. Brought it on board. Still no company name. They just called it the nutrient dense clay mask, and they charged they charged quite a bit for it. They were just giving me trade. So like I would I would do a little like uh, treatment, and you know, and then exchange for products. Uh, but then finally, I'm like, I just all I want to do is a mask, and it's kind of fun to when you finally start getting paid for something you, you created or whatever. It was the most awkward thing ever because how do you come up with a price and charge a friend? But but uh, I did it. It's kind of forced to do it. But anyway, what that did is gave me, uh, you know, validation that I had something professional, but it's still, I mean, Anthony, it's about an hour or a year and a half, maybe two years into it. And then, um, that's when I started pounding the pavement with, uh, estheticians. I mean, private estheticians, friends of friends, none of them said yes. Like, and I get it, you know, they're used to pro brands and they have this guy with a clear plastic container going around and they're like, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's just kind of earthy, which it still is. I just can't remove that kelp powder because it's, it's helpful to the skin. Very helpful. And so I uh, got told no. And I was like, I didn't shelve it because I knew I had something. It was getting small little orders here and there. And that was fine. But what I did is I reached out to Bulletproof because I wanted to work for Bulletproof. And I just copied or I uh, troubleshooted Dave Asprey's email, d.asprey, asprey.dave, dave.asprey, Dave at Bullet, you name it. Every different combination you could think of copy pasted this intro email, a before and after picture of myself in an attempt to work for Bulletproof because I really just, you know, believe in the brand, loved the brand, loved his attention to detail on, on clean ingredients for his products. And one of those went through and they actually, they're like, no, 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 we, we were very interested. And they brought me on board as an ambassador because uh, at that time, uh, I don't think their position was available, but they brought me on board as ambassador and my job was to take pictures and, and then uh, of me and the product and I get the product for free. Which was great because I was already doing that anyway. So, uh, and then about three months later, down the road, his assistant Jackie uh, gave me a call and said, "Dave wants to have you on Bulletproof Radio." And I'm like, I was a little very nervous. And so uh, he went on there and just kind of started geeking out on ingredients in my story. And um, towards the end, he asked me what I did for my skin. This was not planned. Didn't have a website. Didn't have anything up. And so I'm like, oh well, uh, you know, just went back and forth on what I did. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, people want to contact me and I gave out my personal email address. I mean, at this time it was one of the top podcast. It still is top podcasts on iTunes. And, uh, so, you know, millions of downloads. And, uh, so I just kind of, uh, after once that aired, I mean, every time I refresh my Yahoo browser, there was another 
you know, new whatever section of emails and people saying really sweet things, but also people wanting to know where they could buy the mask. And uh, so I had to, oh man, driving around all, you know, driving to different Whole Foods, trying to get that container, hand printing, hand uh, print, hand applying labels, Times New Roman font, came up with a name, had to come up with a name. I went from Golden Glow to Alatura. Luckily, I didn't go to right. Florida. Golden, Golden Glow. Glow. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And I almost did, but people, luckily one person told me honest truth, which is, he's like, hey, I, I got to tell you, man, it sounds like a bronzer. I know. And I'm like, ah, oh, because I, I liked it. But uh, yeah, Alatura is so much better and it speaks to the, you know, the core mission of the brand. And uh, Dave flew down. Um, we partnered up. He invested in the brand. He took it on board as his first Bulletproof Approved skincare product, our clay mask. And it was, uh, from that point on, it was, it was, it was just waiting to hear feedback because people, you know how it is, reviews. People either love it or they hate it. Man, people fell in love with it. And God, that feels so good. So I, what I did is I just kind of generated that and went, all right, I just listened to what people wanted and as far as a moisturizer. And then step by step, it wasn't like a full rollout, but uh, just step by step listening to feedback and then hearing. And then also while doing that, um, like that's when I, you know, that little pace that I was making out of my, my uh, uh, cast iron pan, I was like, all right, well, this, the, this is the ingredient deck that I want to use. And then I found, luckily, I found, man, finding a good manufacturer that doesn't cut corners had, had been and still cut. I mean, I'm good right now, but I mean, it just still, it's, it's constant. You have to stay on top and, and of, of what they're doing and what they're sourcing, how they're sourcing it. Um, and uh, because people cut corners, some, some people, some people do. And that's just, uh, it's unfortunate. But luckily, I found somebody, I found a, my B product base from a family out in Haleiwa, Hawaii, and they just create this pristine live product you know royal jelly beeswax honey propolis pollen i mean it's just it's i can't wait to go out i've already been out there once but i'm gonna go out there and get again and get really good content shots of like this it's hala eva hawaii it's on the north shore of oahu and i mean yeah sounds, ma- sounds magical oh it's unbelievable yeah i i'm, I'm going out there uh, probably in june to get a real because people never never really know like yeah you look at the ingredient deck and, and it's great but I swear what separates our, our products is, is the core B product base that's in our night cream serum moisturizer. And, um, yeah, it's just a uh, body lotion as well. I mean, but it, it's, but I really feel like that's what separates it. And I'm glad we took the time rather than just going to a manufacturer. Oh yeah, we have Royal jelly. Yeah. We have be- beeswax. No, this is a hand harvested live product that, that, I mean, just the smell, the taste, the passion that that family has. And, and we're same page as far as just, alignment i mean my my sourcing is it's very difficult and that you know you pass that off to them it's i mean you know with whatever 21 products and you have 11 different sources i mean 21 ingredients you have 11 different sources i mean that's that's it's 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 a lot of work for them but i mean i i just i'm very uh you know just very particular that's a nice way of putting it with with these things i just i just know what i what i want i have a feeling of what others will as well i mean i i test on myself and then i go forward with with crowd, you know, with, with some beta testing of a, you know, select crowd, but I, I just have a feel for what men and women want. We're, you know, unisex brand, but I know I'm talking your ear off, man. I just love this stuff. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is exactly how I started my journey in this whole thing as well. I mean, when we met, I think we we're kind of at the same stage of this, yes. of this thing. And like, it was the same thing. The guy was sourcing the ingredients, hand picking people and like only at the amounts that I thought were relevant and only the things like I tested on myself and people around me. And then it just started blowing up from there. And I think that you have had a very similar and amazing story. Uh, so yeah, I mean, let's pivot back to the things you were saying, maybe the ingredients in just the ridiculous stuff in the products people are buying, even the high end skincare. So you're talking about stuff like, you know, Dove, et cetera, whatever. Yeah. Those are going to be full of garbage. People could probably assume that, but what people, probably don't realize is that the very high end stuff also uses a bunch of garbage. Um, so maybe some of the ingredients and you don't have to throw any brands under the bus and <laughs> probably yeah. get you in hot yeah. water, but just some of the, some of the things that people should watch out for and, and why. Okay. So, and that's, you know, the, one of the biggest culprits I think is retinol. Okay. So, so retinol is a uh, very, you know, retinol palmitate specifically retinoic acid. I mean, these are things that, are so commonly located in eye creams because it does work. But the, the, I mean, the side effects when you, the, when you get when you go out in the sun and the irritation and the, 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 I mean, what it does, it kind of removes that, that layer of skin, but then you burn it. If you go out in the sun and the, the irritation and then the, 
I mean, just the skin peeling and then also just the, the toxic factors of retinal palmitate in its own right. That's something that is, uh, I would, I would definitely recommend using, uh, in a plant derived, uh, vitamin A source, which you can obviously find through, you know, things like alfalfa, sweet potato. They're out there for sure. But yeah, retinoic acid, I would say the petroleum distillates. So that's this is something that you would want or want to avoid. Want to avoid, excuse me. Yeah. Absolutely avoid that. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be a big one because there's so many people out there that, that use retinol or retinol based eye cream or eye gel because it does work, but I'm tell- there are way there are natural organic ingredients that do the exact same thing without the harsh side effects of the irritating and can't go out in the sun and who knows unpredictable downtime for days sometimes with with uh, with that ingredient specifically. Uh, I would go. Let's see, parabens that are you know methyl paraben, gl- glycoline, uh, propylene glycol. That's another big one. And what do these uh, guys do? So they're they're preservatives but also emulsifying agents as well so what they do it's more of the consistency and uh, flow of the ingredient deck just to ensure a nice consistent pump every single time i mean rather than just i don't know shake it up and then you can get the same beautiful results through natural ingredients i mean it's just there's uh, a lot of fillers pair uh, fragrances it's just diff- different type of uh, preservatives as well that are extremely carcinogenic and the biggest one there i would say sodium benzoate uh bht for sure um th- those are both preservatives uh phenoxyethanol is not that bad a lot of people will argue that potassium sorbate phenoxyethanol aren't are, aren't that bad they're i guess echo cert approved but i mean it's just i mean you're seeing a lot of grape grapeseed e- extract rosemary extract that isn't quite as bad. I actually use a, a kimchi extract in a coconut fermentation, uh, a lactobilis fermentation of coconut, which is, I mean, that's stuff that I would eat. And, you know, you, you go through the testing. It does, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's extremely effective as far as uh, from a preservative standpoint, but also, um, you know, an anti-mold uh, because you're going to be touching it. Obviously, with night cream, you're going to be introducing your own bacteria to that. So you want to yeah. make so, sure that doesn't grow. Like, but like you were talking about yeah. at the beginning here, I mean, what can the downsides of using some of these chemical-based products lead to? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's going to get into your bloodstream within seconds. And so you're disrupting. That's going to be, you know, metabolized and passed through the, the liver and kidneys. And also it's going to disrupt your endocrine system, your adrenals. Um, I have a really hard time with I mean, my mother just is recovering from breast cancer. And so, I mean, I just, it just, I, I'm always thinking like the deodorant she was using, maybe that close to her breast. Like I, I'm thinking about things like all the time of, uh, you know, the aluminum, I, I forget the exact, is it aluminum zirconium? I forget what it is in deodorant specifically, but that's the main thing is these toxic ingredients are getting into your bloodstream and disrupting your endocrine system. And just, I mean, it affects everything from head to toe. And over time, that's going to, I just really feel like that's going to create some type of inflammation and ultimately potentially even lead to disease. And, and, and I just, I feel like, you know, whether fatigue and just over time, that's, that's going to be something that we can control uh, what we put onto and into our bodies. And I feel like that's the, I, that, you know, that, the skincare products and the food that we eat are, have to be the biggest culprits in addition to stress and obviously environmental pollutions and uh, pollution and uh, toxins that we absorb daily just from, you know, being around, I mean, especially out here in LA, but it's, yeah, I mean, just what you put on top, on top of your body is going to be absorbed. So, I mean, you really have to, that's the most important thing is just staying away from those harsh toxic ingredients. And luckily there's an app out there called think dirty. I highly encourage uh, you and your following to download that app. And what you can do is you can scan the UPC code of products and it'll give you a one to 10 cleanliness rating. It'll pinpoint exactly what ingredient is, is causing it to go down or, or, uh, or not up, but yet yeah, ca- causing it to get a bad rating. Now, there's a big, very successful company out there that, um, uh, yeah, I mean, a friend of mine was like, well, what about this? I mean, it's a, my skin's great. And I was like, well, just scan the barcode and let me know what you come back with. And it was a two out of 10. I mean, that's, this is arguably the biggest, I mean, in men's skincare. So it's just, I mean, it's, it's disappointing because it's just something that I, I can't relate to right. uh, at, at all. Uh, what, what, but, is it, what is Alatura score on that? Oh, it's gotta be a 10. I mean, it, there's, 
zero holes whatsoever. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not just, I mean, <laughs> it's, and that's, that's, that's non-negotiable. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I'd rather stand for and be known for than stacking a little bit more. Right. I mean, this is one of the things too, is like people look, I mean, look at, yes, you're eating probably a larger amount of what you put on your skin, but look at the frequency of times, especially females who put things on your skin and, oh, and you're wearing it like, especially if it's makeup or, or lotions or things like that, you're, you're wearing it all day long. And so unless you f- like fully cleanse yourself head to toe when you sleep, it, it literally could be 24 hours of coverage because then you go in the shower and then you apply stuff immediately afterwards. And like you said, it just absorbs directly into your bloodstream. And I think that this is one of the most underrated things that people um, don't realize it is what you put on your skin, like you said, gets absorbed directly into your bloodstream pretty much immediately. It's huge. Right. And, and you know, with, you know, I think they did a, a, a survey recently and some you know, women use, I think it was like 15 to 23 was the range of products uh, daily. And, and so and each say, of those have 15 to 23 different chemicals in it. Absolutely. I mean, you're looking at, you know, a foundation, eyeshadow, shampoo, hairspray, wh- whatever it may be. And I'm not, you know, trying to come down on the people that use all those products, but there are beautiful brands out there that have the same intentions as us. As I, oh shoot. I forget the name of the makeup brand. Uh, I'll find out, but they're great. And I hear, is it bare minerals? I'm not sure if it's, in, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you can get, I mean, there's so many beautiful fruits and, and just different things that we can get from the earth that can create just what you want, um, uh, for your, your skin topically. And then as far as hairspray, Giovanni has a, uh, a, a decent hairspray. I mean, there's just so many ways, but I mean, it, like you said, just all day, just say so you get out of the shower and now you're applying another one or you just got out of the shower and you, you know, use some sh- shampoo that extremely toxic and then you get out and then you put on say in a moisturizer or, or body oil or you use a body wash that's extremely toxic. I mean, this is something daily over time. I mean, it's just, it's going to break you down. I mean, I, I, I don't want to put, you know, instill fear in people, but yeah. just, just, just try to maybe just cut it down a little bit. I mean, give green beauty a chance, whether it's my product or someone else's or whatever. I just, just start to read your labels and definitely download that app because, um, it's extremely helpful and, and, you, and you deserve, I mean, not only from a brain, a brain fog standpoint as well. I just know when, um, for, for instance, like food, skincare and hair care, I don't, I don't really sway off that, but say if I like, uh, if I just, you know, pizza or some type of gluten or whatever, I mean, the whole next day, it's a, it's a total, it's a hangover type feel for me. So I just don't do it or I limit it as much as I can. Sometimes you, know, you got to eat, but, um, yeah, it's just extreme. It's just as important. And you see the cycle, um, and you feel the cycle most importantly. I mean, I want to feel my best every single day and that's, that's stuff we can control. So. Right. And I, would, and I think another thing that people don't realize that's astonishing is that the the difference between the EU regulation and the US regulation. Do you want to touch on that quickly? Right. And so it's uh, completely different to get that EU regulation. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's I, I think there are hundreds of ingredients that <clears throat> excuse me that the United States allows in, in products, topical products. But that, that the that, most of the that, other like the rest of the world does not allow. Absolutely. I don't have that number off the top of my head right now, but it's, it's staggering and which is great. I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, my parents are in Europe right now and it's just, everything is cleaner. It's just, it, it's just how, you know, many, many countries you know, just do things. So it's the only way that they do things as far as just from the earth is, you know, as least processed as possible, as fresh as possible and, uh, additives, preservatives. I mean, it just doesn't even, come into the conversation over there and a lot and a lot of from from the wholesalers that's why a lot of our, our wholesalers are so attracted to the brands because i mean it's just we're on the same page and um just keeping everything as pure as possible we can control that i mean every single thing that that i mentioned whether it's fragrance you can get a beautiful fragrance through essential oils and and different extracts and then preservative you know the kimchi the, the coconut i mean they're out there they're food grade preservatives that you don't have to worry about and you can pronounce and then are derived from food. Um, and then also, you know, fill it out with something that has a purpose, beeswax, cacao butter. I mean, it's, you can get the best and it's not that expensive And glycerin. I mean, sometimes we'll, we'll use a, an organic glycerin just for an emulsifier and our, our cleanser, but that's plant derived and it's, it's great. But some of the, the glycerin is, um, 
uh, it's like it comes from uh, it's animal derived and, and the processing of that is, uh, you know, turns it into a, a carcinogenic pro- ingredient. And so that just there's very many different kinds of alcohol as well that I mean, you look into a product at another huge one had three different kinds of al- types of alcohol. And it was like centerol, benzyl, SD, 40 alcohol. Or, I, f- I forget the th- uh, the second exact one, uh, the the name of it, but, um, but yeah, the, between those three right there, all in one product, in a, you know, in a half an ounce. And the, those are within the first five ingredients. So, I mean, if you do the math on that, it's like, what, what, what are they, and all that does is just dries out the skin. And then you probably, they're probably encouraging, you know, following up with another moisturizer right. because it's, your, your skin clearly needs it after drying it out that much. I mean, it's the, um, intentions are, are disappointing sometimes with, with a lot of these products. And, and so let's say somebody wipes their, uh, everything they put on their screen out and they throw it on like trash. Is there stuff that's required or is it just, because like obviously food, like yeah, if you're eating a bunch of garbage and you toss it all, you need to replace it with something. But is stuff for your skin required? Is soap and the shower, shampoo, conditioner required? Or could you go literally with nothing on your body? So I have had a handful of customers come by booths and conferences and say, yeah, I mean, I, I just never used anything. And I look, they look amazing. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I mean, that's just, you'll see people like that. And believe me, I mean, I, I, I do believe that that is possible. Um, I don't wash my hair a ton. I mean, when I put the mask in my hair, I got, I like to get it out with some uh, Dr. Bronner's peppermint oil soap. But and then I'll take a day off in between that, and I'll just let my natural oils replenish the scalp and and kind of you know nourish the the follicle, and it turns into healthier hair. I mean, rather than just drying out constantly with some um, you know sodium lauryl sulfate based shampoo, it just doesn't make sense. But it, I so there is a way. Um, I, I mean, I've I've seen it. I've heard I've heard of people you know using just water or using just coconut oil as a as a moisturizer. Um, I wouldn't use coconut oil. Maybe I would use olive, but there, I mean, you can keep it very simple with just a really good, uh, base of, I would use that Dr. Bronner soap as as shampoo, maybe a few times a week. And if you really want to keep it simple and just use something like a jojoba oil or, uh, an olive oil as a moisturizer, that's, that's fine too. I mean, that's, that's my carrier in, in a lot of my, uh, a lot of my products is, is good cold pressed organic olive oil. I mean, and, and when combined with other extracts and all, I mean, it just creates a, a good synergy. You got to have a carrier with, um, with other essentials to bring it all through. But I, yeah, I mean, you, you don't really, I mean, what you want to do is ultimately create a, a system within your, with your, with your body through diet and uh, just to replant, I mean, cause your skin, hope, depending on the climate, if you're living in Colorado or Arizona, Utah, I mean, I really feel like that's going to be tough if you don't have a moisturizer, if you don't moisturize at all. But I mean, you want your your body and your skin to replenish and create its own oils, if possible. But if not, then I would definitely use something to just replenish that that lost moisture. Uh, say when you sleep, or say if you're not getting hydrated enough. What do you want for in the sun? Ooh, sun. Ah, see, I'm a fan of getting 15 to 20 minutes of sun daily. <clears throat> now, I'm also very aware that there are people out there that, you know, cannot do that. Just flat out cannot do that. And so there is a sunscreen out there called, uh, by keys, K E Y S solar RX. And it's clean. Um, if I'm going to be out, um, learn the hard way out in, uh, (laughs) Florida in March that, uh, you know, my friends are giving me a hard time. Like, Nope, just going to use my body lotion. That's uh, I'll be fine guys. Don't worry about me. And we were out on the, the jet skis for, you know, eight hours came back. I mean, this thing, that yeah, was definitely peeling. So sometimes, you, I mean, you have to, uh, you got to do what you have to do as far as uh, sunscreen is concerned. So is I would like a zinc oxide one. It's non nano zinc. Yep. And okay. then, uh, the, the titanium dioxide I would steer away from. I I'm okay with zinc. You know, I'm actually going to go forward and, and just make one because everybody wants one. Even if I don't really use it, I'll make the, what I believe to be you know, one of the best. So I'll, I'm going to go forward and do that. But, uh, yes, yeah, but it's going to be non nano zinc. So you're not going to clog the the pores, but also it's going to spread. But it's that's the thing. That's the tough thing with zinc is it's just, you're going to see the white, and I'm not going to dilute it. I'm going to obviously with the with the regulations, I'd like to get it up between a 15 and 20 SPF, possibly 30. I don't know. We'll see. But it, that the, the zinc is a you know it's a mineral, and, and it's something that is extremely uh, 
beneficial in, in blocking out those rays. And it's pure. And just as long as you're getting a, a good source, I mean, some people will combine that with titanium dioxide. I don't have that big of a problem with titanium dioxide. I just prefer zinc um, for the for the purpose or for the reason that it's just you know it's natural, it comes from the earth, okay. and and it spreads well. So yes, Keys Solar RX. If you're going to use a sunscreen, I highly recommend. Cool. And then as far as um, other times they use other things like you're talking about, I think that you have some, pro- like you, you guys have a lot of products and a lot of different things. And, and I think that people, this is one of the main questions they ask me. Cause I mean, we have like 70 excuses. So it's like when and how and, and why and all this different stuff. So right, maybe just the best way to go through it is to go over your routine. If you have one and you know, it's timing type of products and then why you use each one and sure. maybe it's people getting some clarity and, and if that might fit for them particularly. Absolutely. So a daily cleanser is huge. And we uh, say, I, I'll, I, what I do is I, in the morning, I'll cleanse my face with the pearl cleanser. And uh, that is pearl powder, uh, colloidal silver to eat up that bacteria. It's great. It's, so what I'll do is I'll just rinse that off. And if it's my day to do the mask, I'm, I'm, I've worked my way up to like, I don't know, four or five times a week. But say if you so want to do you have it, to work your way up to that many times? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I would recommend one to three times a week. Um, and you're still going to see incredible results, even if you just do it one time a week, you know, say Sunday night, we have a lot of customers that just, you know, look forward to their little mass day, which is awesome. And, but that's, that's one of those things I would recommend doing. Um, so I, some people like to do it in the morning before they shave, like men before it lifts up that follicle. So it just completely wipes off the, the hair uh, right before you shave. But, um, or you could do it at night before you go to bed and just, you know, hydrate, and condition with like a, a gold serum or a night cream, and then just you wake up completely rejuvenated. But either way, I, I cleanse. I say if I'm doing the mask right after, I'll do a little derma roller, which opens up the exterior uh, epidermis of the skin. So you're you're it's kind of like the the whole aerating of your your lawns, uh, and it's also like a little acupuncture type feel to it, where it just rolls these tiny micro needles and kind of creates these little openings that not only triggers your body to, to repair itself and create its own thicker collagen, but it allows the pathway to absorb these micronutrients and these really good, rich ingredients uh, past that initial layer of the skin for optimal absorption. So you're getting the most out of your products, you know? And so that that is something I love. And it's actually, it's becoming a really popular little routine. Um, we, we have, a, so just like a pearl cleanse, derma roll, clay mask, rinse off the clay mask, gold serum to moisturize and you're good to go. Now, if you want to turn that up and then say you're going to bed, maybe seal it in with the night cream for some extra, like very thick, rich, uh, nourishment, just right around the eye area, maybe cheek and behind the ears. And just to, I mean, cause that's the most important time to really rehydrate and replenish lost, uh, moisture throughout the day is when you're in one position for say six to eight hours while you sleep. And so that's yeah. where, that's where that combination of the gold serum and, and night cream really do their job. And the, the ingredients do an incredible, uh, incredible job of just hydrating and conditioning and stimulating that collagen synthesis while, you, while you're in that one position. So getting a good night cream or a good nighttime moisturizing treatment, cleansing every day, cleansing before you go to bed, and then doing the mask a couple times a week or, or once a week is fine. I mean, that's, that's, that's optimal. And you stick with that routine and, and it's, it's, uh, it's something I can't go without for sure. This is one of the things that my, so my girlfriend always talks about serum, this serum, that like, I, I don't understand what, <laughs> what that means. Can you, can you explain for the men out there? Like what, what a serum is when you should use it and why? Right. Absolutely. So we have a moisturizer and a serum. So serums are, it's a highly concentrated form of the, of a moisturizer with usually specific targeted active ingredients. Now, um, say it's, in our case, we have copper peptide. We have marine collagen, CoQ10, astaxanthin, and um, plant-derived vitamin A, which we source from France. So you're getting all those actives in it. So you're getting like the best from nature. I mean, from from cutting edge science with those active ingredients, but also in a in an all natural organic base. So that's it was kind of a gamble to start with, but I mean, man, I'm so glad we did because usually it's one or the other, right? Like as far as going forward with copper peptide and then combining it with organic Australian sandalwood and frankincense and rosado and all these really rich, uh, you know, oil based ingredients because they're essential oils. A lot of them are extracts as well, but combining those with things like copper peptide in a plant derived vitamin A, which in astaxanthin, which actually is 
uh, has a consistency of uh, good essential oil. But yeah, I mean, it was just to get that formulation and really, uh, it just, it's a concentrated moisturizer, but that has specific targeted benefits to it. Like, you know, just reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, but not complete. I mean, you're not going to just get rid of those, but it'll reduce over time. It'll, especially if you use a derma roller, you'll notice, I mean, that it just resurfaces that area and it fills out that, that, uh, that small little crow's feet. I've no, yeah, I've definitely noticed that I had those coming out of college when I was 20, what, 23. And just for, from being out in the outfield, sun's beating down on me. And I swear over, it's just because of consistency of exfoliating, hydrating, and then just nourishing that area before you go to bed and just, just keeping it somewhat simple, but also not missing days, but staying consistent with it. That, I think that's the biggest culprit. Some people will go, you know, they'll forget a couple of days. And I mean, that, 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 that adds up. I mean, I'm a 95, five guy with skincare. Like I very rarely miss days. I mean, it's just something that makes me feel good. And I'm going to exude better energy through feeling good. It's kind of like a little ripple effect through right. your, who you meet, you know? So you talked about a uh, system of nourishing from in and out. And so what, what is the day to day for you look like for nutrition? Oh yeah. So I wake up, I'll do, oh man, my supplements are getting out of hand, but I, I I'll do a, a bulletproof coffee, but, um, I'll have before that I'll have my, my supplements. You know, I like the thrive probiotic K two seven, uh, alpha lipoic acid, CoQ 10, serapeptase, natokinase, astaxanthin, krill oil. And then I'll make my coffee, which is uh, a bulletproof coffee. And then I'll, I'll add cacao butter to it, chocolate powder, reishi mushroom, cordyceps, lion's mane, cayenne powder, uh, vanilla stevia to make it taste somewhat manageable. And uh, a little grass fed butter and some brain octane oil. And then, so I'm, I'm good to go and say if I ate at nine the night before. Now, you would know better than I. Now, a lot of people say, yeah, you just disrupted your fast. And I'm like, well, I'm, and say I don't eat until two. So we're looking at three, 12, 15. So, so a 17 hour fast right there. And uh, that's what I do daily. And then I'll have a big meal at uh, around two, 2 30, usually grass fed lamb, broccoli, sweet potatoes, beets, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, avocado. A uh, little uh, fermented uh, beet kraut, which is uh, beets, cabbage, just to help with digestion. I mean, it's a, a huge meal that's, that's all that I look forward to because you you know you just you know your, your body is looking forward to satiating itself and just really you know replenishing all the, the the minerals and good fats and protein that it needs. And then usually after that, I'll, I'll have like uh, get back to work. And then before I, I work out, I mean maybe I'll take a little espresso shot before I go work out, and then um, I'll work out semi i wouldn't call that fasting but say if it's like 7 7 15 at night you know i ate at 2 2 30 you know I'm, I'm still good i'm not that hungry but then when i come back i'll have a little lighter dinner but definitely some uh, a different type of protein so if i went grass-fed lamb at lunch i'll tr- maybe go salmon or eggs at dinner so it's a little softer a little easier on the system to digest but uh similar uh vegetables as well i mean I'm, i i go through a lot of broccoli a lot of sweet potatoes beets I mean, those are my go-tos right there as well as uh, the fermented vegetables. And then take some uh, magnesium before I go to bed and maybe some some silica drops and ashwagandha, um, rhodiola, which is awful. And then, um, yeah, wake up, do it all again. Man, hell of a routine. <laughs> what about you? I'm always, I'm always curious because uh, obviously not only what you do, but you're, you're – I'm, I'm not really – in. I mean, I don't know. I don't I – don't, I don't check my blood as far as if I'm in ketosis or, um, I probably should, but yeah, I mean, I, mean I don't think you should. I mean, if, if you're looking good, feeling good and that's the way it is, like you don't need to do anything. Like I, I just feel best mentally when I'm in ketosis and I know what I need yeah. to do to, to stay there. So that's why I yeah. do it. But man, if, if you found a system that works for you, you do that, man. If you have some beets and some sweet potatoes, I don't think it's going to, I don't <laughs> think it's going to total the car, you know? No, definitely not. Beets, especially that that's been my, I mean, I don't know if it's like the, the the VO2 or the nitric oxide content in in that or the hydrochloric acid that helps di- with digestion, but it's it's something that I mean I, I really see an increase in vascularity physically from that, but also just overall well being, just blood flow, circulation, head and toe. I mean it's I love beets and the greens. That's another one. The greens are actually really good. Don't toss those, steam them up, boil them, do something. The beet greens, yeah, yeah, definitely. And Andy, lots of action packed in this one. If there's one thing that people could take away from this episode about how they could use or not use skin skincare products, what would it be? Buy Altera stuff or what? 
Oh, well, no, I mean, you know, there are a lot of, that's a good thing about green beauty is it's expanding. I mean, I'll be, I mean, I know what the, the intention of, of, of my formulation and the process and the phone calls. I mean, that, that, they're the pro- a lot of formulators aren't used to having people, you know, how it is having people that this, I mean, there's a, a hard bottom line that, that, we, that I will not cross, but I mean, I would just to say, absolutely download that think dirty app. Be very aware of what you're putting into what, what you're putting onto your body just as much as, as what you're putting into. Because I mean, there are so many products out there that have hidden toxins in the natural fragrance. Guess what? Natural fragrance is not that. I mean, that's a government recognized term that makes it okay uh, to, to, you know, to, to write that down, just similar to like natural flavors or, you know, with hot, with hiding, you know, MSG or monosodium glutamate. But yeah, I would just really encourage the, you know, your, your listeners to, to just pay attention to your labels and really, really educate yourself on, on an ingredient. Say if you can't, there's a ton of information out there. Say if you can't figure out what this certain ingredient is or what it does, if there's something a little, you're a little skeptical of, definitely look it up. I mean, there are a lot of really good sites out there that can provide you with that information. And then also my, if you want to check out our, our website, it's alaturanaturals.com. All the uh, customer support inquiries go through myself and, and my team. And we're ha- we love, I mean, I, I definitely love this stuff. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And um, yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I love what I do. And I, you know, that accident threw me right into where I'm supposed to be. And uh, which is what I was searching for, for a long time. And so it's fun to find your, your passion and your purpose or, your purpose through your passion, right. I guess. So it's amazing, man. Well, thanks for sharing your story. Is there anywhere else people can find your stuff? Uh, yeah. So we're in, uh, all the air one locations here in Los Angeles. We're mostly online at alaturnaturals.com. And I can, I could definitely, you know, create a coupon code for your, your following. We could just call it keto answers if you want 20% yeah, sure. off and free United States shipping. So, yeah, I mean, but also, I mean, I, uh, I really appreciate you having me on. I know uh, I've been I know I've been wanting to do this, and uh, I just and I do have to tell you, 2015 when you came by my booth, I just your growth uh, when when you handed me that sample at Paleo Effects. I mean, look at you now, man. I, I just have to say, like from a friend to friend, like I I truly mean that. It's 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 very inspiring, in a in a in a just an admiring way. You know Likewise, I mean? like, man. Appreciate very it. cool. I appreciate you. All right, Andy. Thanks for being on the show, my man. Right on. Thanks for having me. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Keto Answers Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. But even if you didn't, I would love a review. Just go over to iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast, and pop in a review so we can get found by more people, get better guests, and have the information that you need. So please go to iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast, and leave us a review. And if you're new to keto, head on over to perfectketo.com slash podcast and enter your email for all our top tips and guides on getting started with the ketogenic diet. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Bye.